my horses. Well, we're out here today in another cousin's field. Uh, just been out here in the deer stand for the last three hours. Um, saw a group of about 15 does over here running around. So I'm just coming over here to investigate, see if there's any bucks that I might possibly be able to scare up, although I'm, you know, out here foot hunting with a 5.56, five, so I don't think I'm going to get a chance at that. Uh, certainly not ethically, uh, probably not safe. But, yeah, oh lord, horses don't like me. Anyway, the reason why I'm out here is that guy right there. That excavator's been out here for forever, and uh, I've inadvertently been told I can have it if I can get it to run. So I'm going to go over there and see what state it's in. I'm, I've am i looked at it before, and I'm pretty certain it's, it's not going to move under its own power, but it may have an engine in it that's uh, worth salvaging. Okay, bye horses. So yeah, we're gonna go poke around. Um, just if you wanna know, there there is a group of five does over there in that clump of trees, because they were in this clump of trees, and it includes our local piebald, who I've named Sunday. Because uh, she's white on the bottom and brown on the top, like an ice cream sundae. So uh, I'm not out here trying to bag a doe today. Uh, actually, my first day deer hunting. So uh, I'd like to land one of the mature eight point bucks that I've caught on camera. And uh, not a doe. No, at least not for my first deer at the very least. Only got another week left in the season. So yeah, I'm gonna shut up because the cows do not like me talking. And they're all staring at me. And I'm feeling self-conscious. Oh, there goes a deer. So, yeah, I'm going to get back to being quiet. See you on the flip side. All right, well, I came around the back, so I had the sun at my back. Uh, that was just a yearling doe, so I didn't spook anything important talking to y'all. So it's a Hitachi. It's an excavator, and that's all I know. And uh, I've been parked here for uh, at least as old as that tree is. And uh, there's a river right there, so it's been in uh, salt spray uh, practically this entire time. Uh, as you can see, it ain't moving anywhere on its own because uh, it's gone. So that's for certain. But there may be an engine in there. And that's what I'm interested in because ain't nothing left of this frame. I'm pretty sure this used to be on a barge because uh, I don't know how, how else uh, undercarriage is gonna get like this. I mean, you just saw that move. That's like half inch plate, you know, and it's just toast. So yeah, I'm gonna poke around, see if I can get into the engine. Uh, that looks to be a cover right there. It's got a key, don't know if it's locked or not. And uh, we'll try and get an idea of uh, the status this thing is in. Yeah, I'm just kind of in awe of how, uh, how big and how uh, shitty of a condition this thing is in. There's a reason why someone left it here. It's because there ain't no way to move it. Good lord, look at the tooth on that thing. That's rusted through too. Hydraulics seem to be in decent shape, though. Hmm, could be worth parts to somebody. All right, how many wasps you want to bet live in here? Say a thousand. Well, there's still bits in here. Um, let's say on the engine side. I don't know if that is either. See, is this open? Oh 
good, that's not locked. It is bent, though. Uh, stand by, I'm beat on this a bit. Well, I'm up here in the cab, just poking around, and uh, this pedal works. Uh, this pedal is so tight that if you uh, pull on this knob, you actually bend the handle down there. Um, I don't know which of these is the shifter. Uh, that appears to be the throttle. Uh, that's kind of sticky, but I was able to move it. Um, but as you can see, it's very tight. There's no play at all in that, that linkage. This thing seems to move. Yeah, I got no idea. I'm just trying to find a model number or something so I can figure out what the heck kind of engine's in it. So yeah, that one came open as you saw. Almost landed in cow shit. Can't get that door open. It's not locked. It's just uh, obstinate. Kind of don't want to reach my hand through there to feel what's going on, just in case wasps. But yeah, that doesn't want to move, so I'll have to find a crowbar or a cow bone or something. Um, and I think that's how I get at the engine. So I'm going to have to hop up there and get stung by a bunch of yellow jackets. Alright, uh, got this up. Uh, surprisingly, uh, no live wasps. One old nest. Oh, yeah, one, two old nests. But no wasps at the moment. It's cold out, so luckily they're elsewhere. Uh, she's a diesel, as you can tell by the injectors. I pulled the uh, gas cap center there, and it smelled like diesel. Um, I'm assuming that's some kind of breather or PCV, and uh, it has a. Uh, it's a, it's got a lot of airflow now. Um, there's also a, a nifty aftermarket uh, muffler bypass going on. Oh, Lord, I'm trying not to fall through the top of this thing. Uh, if I were a dipstick, I would be right here. How much you want to bet it's full of water? Well. It looks like it may just be oil. Damn it, I was hoping it was full of water so I could not get my hopes up. I just got a nice piece of spider web in there. Hmm. It obviously has a, a coolant leak because there's like 20 antifreeze bottles. Uh, no battery in it. Um, I'm assuming that is the uh, engine. UH10EM100HKDB7090. I don't know what that says. Kino? Something. It's progress. Let's see if I can get this oil cap off. And... Oh, that's just rubber. Well, uh, there's some crud in there, but I'm not seeing any rust. Hmm. Judging from the, uh, the hour meter inside the cab, it's only been run for 890 hours, which is low. Uh, either that or it's, uh, 10,891 of the two. Well, shit. I don't see anything obvious. Uh... Standing out to me, uh, there looks to be a, an oil sensor down on the bottom of the oil pan that's been chewed off because there's a rat's nest underneath it. Um, so that might keep it from starting. Uh, no idea if any of the controls in the cab works work or how that wiring is. Uh, that's been chewed off. Yeah. I think there might be life to this engine, but there ain't, there ain't life to this excavator, I'll tell you that. I guess I'm gonna put everything back together, poke around a little bit more, and then head on my merry way. Yeah, it's cool. Free engine. If you want this, uh, if you want this excavator or this engine, hit me up. Uh, you must have everything you need to get it out of this field, and uh, the terrain in this cow field is a moonscape. So uh, be prepared. And this place is a fucking moonscape. I don't know how the cows keep making these goddamn holes like this. Uh oh, horses. And dirt.
Lots of dirt. God, look at these fucking ant hills. Like three foot tall. I bet it's the ants. I bet it's the ants and not the goddamn cows. The horses don't care when I drive a car, but I get fucking 100 foot from them on foot and they freak out. Jesus, look at that. My shitty old Jeep suspension ain't helping none. Ooh, there's a big fucking hole there. There's a damn fox den. There she is. The Hitachi. Just look at all that fucking cow shit on my tire. Huh, I think my cousin put a deer stand up. I don't remember that being there. But anyway, bringing the old Jeep battery out here, which I am confident is not big enough. But, uh... I just want to huck a battery in here and see what the fuck happens because I can find absolutely fuck all about this goddamn motor or this damn excavator. Like nothing. Zero. Zilch. I found one parts catalog from Hino for their line of commercial trucks that mentions that this uh, EM100 engine was used in like 1984 in one of their trucks. And they're the ones who manufactured the damn engine. And I can find nothing for manuals online that aren't you know sending a check to a shady russian site for 60 bucks and hoping they mail you a service manual which i'm not going to do to this thing since i have no fucking idea what the hell state it's in and uh i can find nothing on the hitachi uh10 which is what i'm assuming this is uh, because everything is missing um it does have english writing on it so that's kind of uh Indicative that it may not be a UH-10 and uh, the whole fact that there's nothing written on it Also, it's been a month and I'm just now finally getting back to this thing I'm gonna try and poke around see if I can find any indication of like a model number At all. It looks like this thing was painted with a brush Sometime in the past You know, getting confirmation that it is a UH-10 other than the fact that it's, you know, cast into the engine. Oh, it's a UH-123. I'm fucking blind. How did I miss that? Huh, was there leaves on this tree last time? Anyway, well, it's a UH-123, so I'm going to go back and uh, look up a bunch of stuff on that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, if possible, I'm just going to huck a battery in here because these look to be attached. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, oh, okay, I see. It was a 24-volt system. Uh, ooh. Anyway, I'm just going to huck a battery up here somewhere, approximately, because there's no battery pan left. Man, that is... That was a... That was 8th-inch plate. So, uh, good to know, it is a 24-volt, so I need two batteries. But, uh, I just want to see if it'll, like, do anything at all i was just hoping to be able to turn it over like half a half a stroke so we'll see all right well i'm trying to figure out which one of these cables goes to the positive and which goes to the negative i would assume that's negative because it has a black boot on it and i think it is i think it's the correct size and the donkey is slowly making his way over here to see what the hell i'm doing and i have heard reports that these donkeys are assholes so hopefully he doesn't try and kick the shit out of me um, this is definitely the negative right here, so we will not connect that to the positive, and this must be the positive, and, uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna pay attention to this donkey, because uh, I don't want to get fucking donkey kicked. Hello, donkey. Hi. You're very cute. What can I help you with? I'm not, I'm not here to fuck with you, alright? Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm standing up here because I really don't want to get kicked by a donkey today. Hi, donkey. Hi. Well, the donkey fucked off. Um, and I got the battery hooked up. And I guess I'm going to go up there and uh, just put the key to the on position and uh, see if anything happens. And uh, then see if it'll crank at all. I mean, it is only a... V6, although it, you know, probably weighs fucking 1,500 pounds. 
But uh, we'll see if uh, 12 volts is enough to get it to turn over or if that regulator right there uh, will just uh, make nothing happen. Uh, it won't be a complete waste because now, now I know it's a UH-123, so I might be able to find something uh, find something else out about it. Uh, don't know why the uh, engine is stamped uh, UH-10, though. We'll find out. All right, don't know if I can climb it up in this bitch one-handed. Look at that rust. <laughs> you guys in the rust belt think you got rust bad. You ain't seen fucking <clears throat> barge excavators. All right. Nothing. That's better to the start position. Do you hear that? We do have, indeed, <clears throat> Bindex action. So, the starter is at least attempting to work, but, you know, only well, has 12 volts in the system. So we have, uh, we have wiring up to the starter at the very least, I just need a second battery. Uh, I do in fact have a second battery right there, but uh, it's Friday night and I'm not f fucking straining myself out here throwing a, my goddamn car battery in, so uh, we're not going to do that today. So uh, we're just going to call it quits for here, and I'll pick up at a later date when uh, I've got more tools, and, uh, including one of those I have no friends, uh, not shooting yourself, but uh, turning the engine over, clicky button doohickeys. So, uh, yeah, we'll give that a shot at a later date if I can find the starter. I think I might climb up there and poke around the engine bay just a little bit more after I disconnect all of this garbage. Because it's just beat on here. And uh, it could just be that I could <clears throat> probably clean up these contacts because I just tightened all of these down. And this there is just a really bad connection in here. And I don't know if this is a 12-volt starter or a 24-volt starter. Because it could just be that the starter only needs 12 volts. I'll, although it would need all the amps. So, don't really know how that works, don't really care to find out at this exact moment. But I'm going to go poke around the engine bay and uh, just see what the hell is happening. And try not to get molested by donkeys. So uh, I found this big ass drain and I got absolutely no idea what it's for. It's taper thread, but uh, that's probably not a good thing, unless it's just a big ass drain. Uh, it seems like something got, you know, dumped out. <clears throat> Whoop. Let's see, what's in here? <clears throat> An intact lock cylinder. Don't know what this is. Some kind of hasp. <laughs> Diesel cap. Hmm, I wonder how I can get some ether in here. Well, not like that. I guess I gotta... I ain't gonna come off. There somehow, some way, this thing. Don't know if this is an oil bath or not. Oh! Oh, that's coming. I guess we'll find out right here if it dumps oil everywhere. Or if it's full of bees. It could, in fact, be full of bees. Now I'm excited. I want to see how many bees are in it. I don't think they'd put a big ass lever on or big ass wing nut on it if uh, they didn't want you ripping it. This is spring loaded. It desperately wants out. Yeah. Uh, or not. So 
is this this captive or something? Oh, I guess so. Well, it doesn't appear to be full of oil. And there appears to be a at most a minimal number of bees. Okay, good. It's just a regular air cleaner. Sweet. Let's put that back in before we let all the factory bees out. Right, let's just let's stand on the cross supports and not on the panel. This fucking son of a bitch up. All right. No, you're just... Okay, we're gonna leave that there because it wants to fall right the fuck off. And, uh, yeah, that's an engine. It's still here. It ain't gone anywhere. Where's the starter at? Is this the starter? I think that's the starter. Uh, it's got a big fucking wire on it, so my guess is a starter. It's on the back of the engine, too. Who's that? Is that a dipstick or... No, that's for... I don't know what those are. I'm gonna try and pull on them though. Could also be the engine seized and maybe that's why the starter's not turning over. It is also a very, very small battery and not 24 volts. So I'm just gonna assume it's that because uh, I don't wanna dig in there and try and find something to get on that crank bolt. Oh yeah, oh, that's just a big boy starter, that's why. Ton of crud on it. There's our pump. I have no idea, I, I'm assuming these are the probably the Transmission doohickeys. I'm gonna try and navigate over here without dying because no one knows I'm out here and uh, see if these are dipsticks. Nope. Nope, that's for like picking the whole fucking thing up or something. Oh, hey, we have parts. That's what that is. Let me get a photo of that real quick. Alrighty, here we go. Look what I just found. Oh yeah, that's what I've been looking for. In fact, a UH-123, model number one, manufacturing number 1563440, Hitachi Construction Machinery Company LTD, Tokyo, Japan. Hydraulic excavator. Nice. Alright, so now, now we have a uh, the correct model number to work off of, and hopefully I'll be able to find some more, uh, more shit about this engine here shortly. All right, that was a good find. Almost missed that. Whew. Man, I couldn't even, you could barely even tell it was a brass plate. I had to use the old, uh, spit on it and then wipe the brown stuff off method. You fellas know what I'm talking about. But, uh, it came around. So, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna call it today. Really, this was just a scientific expedition, for lack of a better term. This is next time. We're going to see if it'll fucking do something. Are those deer? Yeah, those are deer. Look at them things. Look at them fucking dirt. I'm watching you, you fucker. Alright, so I was able to talk to my old boss, and he let me uh, get back into the shed out there and uh, pick up this here battery that uh, the previous guy left. Uh, don't know why I left it in there. Uh, pretty sure it was in his car and probably just died. Um, but I tested it... When was that? Three years ago? Four years ago? And it worked. So, uh, still got water in it. I can't shake it because I'm one-handed, but... Um, still got water in it. It uh, held a charge then. Uh, and uh, it's just been sitting in 100% humidity in a shed that fluctuates wildly in temperature. So, uh, should be fine. It's just probably really dead, but... Uh, we'll charge it up and uh, see what the hell happens. And would you look at that. This one's dead as dicks, too. Why, did you think I was gonna give up that easily, fuckle nuts? <laughs> oh, hell no. I am cheap to the bone. So, uh, she's still got 7 volts in her, which means she still has life. Uh, just yet. Uh, if she gets below 5, that's when you really gotta worry. But it's still above 7, which I think is not bad, considering uh, nobody's charged the thing for, you know three years and it's been sitting in a garage in 100% humidity and that garage goes from about 140 to about 40 uh, throughout the year. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's taken a charge somewhat. Uh, I've got it hooked up to uh, the old Jeep battery. That's what I had thrown in the excavator before. 
Uh, interestingly, I didn't know that, uh, group 24s and group 34s are basically exactly the same. Uh, except it looks like group 24 is a little bit taller, it could just be the Duralast. Uh, but the polarity swap, that which actually works out perfectly uh, for what we need to do. Uh, actually, no it doesn't, because we have to hook these up in series rather than parallel. So it's going to really fuck us over, because I'm going to have to be hooking it up diagonally and shit like that. And that's not going to be fun. Uh, but we'll figure it out. I can just turn the thing 180. It's not a big problem. Don't worry about it. Shut the fuck up. Uh, so I'm just going to let this sit on here for... Uh, an hour or so, come back, make sure it hasn't caught fire, and uh, check the voltage, and uh, see if it's taking anything. Uh, once we get her above, I think, 9 volts, we'll be able to get that to, to work. Um, hopefully. So, uh, we shall see. Okie dokie. Well, I've had her charging for about 45 minutes, and if you look here, she's taking a charge. She's up to 11.5. That's a lot faster than I thought. That guy's only a 13.5, and it was probably at 12-something when I started. So that's good. It took a charge real quick. Uh, so I'm going to hook it back up just solo on its own and uh, see what it does. I'll go for another hour or so, uh, take it off, let it sit for a day, check the voltage the next day, and uh, see whether or not it's hemorrhaging voltage or not. Uh, I've, I've, um, I've charged up deep cells before, and they look like they have voltage, and then you you take them off the charger, and then you, you measure them five hours later, and they're stone cold. So, uh, we shall see, uh, but I, I'm hopeful. Uh, I don't, I don't think this battery was used much. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it charges. Ooh, that's a good sign. Yep, looks like she's going. Awesome. It didn't even, uh, didn't even spike up. It's right where I would expect it to be for about 11 and a half, uh, volts. Sweet. Well, it's the next morning. I only let her run for maybe another hour and a half before I shut her off. Things were not looking good with the voltmeter um, as far as this thing taking a charge. So uh, it's been uh, about mm, 11 hours now. Um, let's, let's see if it's still got some voltage in it. Oh, it does. See, this is the thing I noticed. Okay, good, 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 good. So we are charging. Uh, it's just that when I had it before, I had it it was charged up to 12, and as soon as I took it off the charger and I put both leads on it, it started going tick, 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 tick down. And it was at like, it was it was doing that. Every time I took it off the charger, it was just dropping in voltage just by a, a hundredth of a volt, um, like every second. And I got really worried, but it looks like it is in fact holding a charge because it's still at 11.4. It was at 12 when I took it off, so it just looks like, like any battery, it's got like a, like a half volt overcharge that just needs to dissipate, um, but before the thing will actually show the correct voltage. So I'll finish up charging this thing, and, uh, hopefully it'll still be good whenever I need it. Well, after letting her charge for another four hours the following day, whoop, as you can see, we're now up to 12 something, and it's stable. It goes down every single time I... Touch the leads to it, which is weird. It was 12.30, and then it was 12.20, and now it's 12.18, but it doesn't go down when I have the leads connected. I think it's just a bad contact on the red over there. But uh, she's topped off now. Um, I think uh, I think the charger's uh, tapped out uh, on the 10-amp uh, charge, but battery's holding a charge. We'll check it again in the morning and uh, see how it's doing. But uh, signs are promising. All right, it's following morning. Let's see what we got. Hey, you! Still up by twelve. Um, I want to say that charger should charge more than that, but considering it stopped at exactly twelve, I'm thinking that uh, when you don't accidentally leave this thing set to fifty amps, uh, like I keep doing, and boiling batteries, uh, it stops at twelve volts. So uh, we're gonna say that this one's good because uh, it. Lost like, what was that? I don't even remember what it was at. Uh, 0.25 volts overnight. So I think it's good. We'll call it good. I mean, it's free, so it's good enough. All right, so it's the second week of the next deer season. I just finished zeroing my new Ruger American. Like this gun. And uh, I think it's about time we run on over yonder and see if we can get that Hitachi to, you know, turn over and, and, you know, chooch if we can. It's a bright, green, ungodly hot August afternoon, and we're loaded for bear. 
We got all the goos we're going to possibly need. Two batteries. One that is mostly good. And a whole bunch of tools and a chainsaw. And an excavator. And I'm going to see if I can make it coof today. See if we can uh, get her to spin over and uh, get her to chooch a little bit. Um, that's really all I'm hoping to do today. Um, if I can get the, the starter and the engine to spin and a black cloud to come out, I'll be happy. And uh, I'm also going to get rid of this Chinese tallow tree because they're horribly invasive here uh, where I live and uh, I just fucking hate it and also it's in my way. So that's the first step is we're going to bust out chainsaw and uh, get rid of that son of a bitch. Thankfully, it looks like we've got a thunderstorm rolling in, so I actually won't die heat stroke, maybe. That'd be nice. that gone I'll finish cutting that up and hauling it into the woods before I leave because this is a you know active cattle pasture so I don't want to leave this out here in the middle uh, plus it'll just make more popcorn trees come up under it uh, just grew into the tracks just a little bit had to leave that um, I don't think this is gonna get in the way of anything other than the fact that it's physically in the way of my sanity so we're gonna bust this open and I'm gonna hop up on top pull all the covers and everything off and look for paper wasps because that's the last thing I want is to get in here and start banging on stuff and then get stung back about 33 times by wasps. So I'm going to get in here and spray any nests I see, get rid of any wasps, um, you know, get up in there and everything. Take, you know, covers off of the air cleaners and fuel tank and exhaust and all that stuff. Just make sure there's no wasps. In my experience, wasps don't seem to like diesels. Like, there's something about the scent of diesel they just don't like. We'll poke around and uh, just make sure there's not any you know, of the nasty red and black ones hanging around that are uh, gonna cause me trouble. And uh, then we'll uh, attempt to huck a battery into this fucking thing. Oh boy, I brought, I brought some battery cleaners and some new terminals and everything. But uh, honestly, these don't look as bad as I thought they did other than the fact that I'm never gonna be able to get those off. Cause uh, they look to be lead. Anywho, I'll stop rambling, start working. And uh, let's see if we can get this thing to chooch. All right, so I cleaned up the battery cables and I've got them marinating in some PB blaster. Got up in here, no new wasps, maybe a little bit more mouse damage. I don't know what that wire down there is for, but it's got a whole bunch of mouse chewing on it. Uh, didn't even have to use this, took the air cleaner out. It's just got a double filter, a double fuck huge filter. So we got a big old straight shot into the gullet for me to just dump some, uh, um, what you fucking call it, starter fluid down there, can scent the can. And uh, I found where the, uh, primer pump is so I'm sorry pumped it about 20 times I'm just gonna pump it some more I think I'm gonna go down there and uh, grab my um, adjustable wrench and come back up in here and uh, crack open the injectors and see if I can bleed the fuel filters see if there's anything in there um, shine a flashlight down into the fuel tank see if there's any goo left and uh, if we're out of goo I'll run home and grab some and fill up the filter and uh yeah um i think it's time to huck a battery in here and just see if the uh, starter spins over for again any farther all right uh i'm just going under the assumption that uh this is a uh, 24 volt system so i've got you know these two guys hooked up in uh series that battery is dead but i think i've got it enough boiled that it's mostly half dead that one's fine just old so i think together they'll make you know like 87% of a battery, maybe even 90, and uh, that might be enough to get it. All I know is I hooked that up and I heard something click. So hopefully that's a good sign. And uh, I'm gonna hop up into this mess, if I can do that without dying. All right, so we're up here. Um, make sure everything is in, well, as neutral as it can get. 
That seems to be good. Okay, I uh, think we're in park or something. Not that there's any hydraulic fluid in this. Uh, we've got her in the start position. Let's see if she cranks. Well, not the best sign. Well, here, relay. That's about it. Whale piss. Alright, so I never could get her to do anything, so I came in here and I cleaned up these two battery terminals. That one was really bad. That one was pretty bad because it's not set up properly, but, you know, these are all mostly solid now. This one's still a hair on the iffy side, but it's a thousand times better. And, uh, I yank myself back up in here and, uh, see if we get any progress. Nope. Still just a click. It may be that I just don't have enough amps. Um, Cause I'm sure this thing probably takes like a group 49 and these are whatever these are, 27s something. Those are out of a Jeep. They're like 600 something cold cranking amps. I bet it takes two 900s. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I ain't gonna spend $250 in batteries. Play with this thing. Um, Guess I could get a jump pack or something. I don't know, but I'm assuming it's probably just fucked wires. Hmm. I wonder if the headlights will work. Wipers? Oh, there are no wipers. Let me go see if there's some lights. That might give us some kind of hint. I don't think there's any lights on the whole damn thing to begin with. Well. That might have been a light one time, but, uh, it's Wi-Fi now. All right, well, uh, I think that's going to be it for this girl, because, uh, I'm not going to spend any money on it, and, uh, I got better things to do than to yank this thing apart and, uh, try and get this starter working. Um, theoretically, wouldn't be too much to, you know, plumb some jumper cables in there, but, uh, I got no idea what that thing does. Hmm, that is some delicious looking diesel down in there. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, that's a liquid underneath that. Um, yeah. I think that's what we call algae around these parts. So anyway, we did have diesel in it at the very least. Um, Anyway, I'm just putting everything back up uh, because even when uh, something is a big pile of shit and it doesn't work, um, always, always put stuff back together because you never know who's going to come back around and uh, try and work on it one day because it may just be you or uh, someone you care about. And uh, the last thing you want to do is fuck stuff up for the next guy. So even if you think something's just going to sit in the back corner of a field and rust away for the next 75 decades, um, you know, at least go back and, you know, put the air filter back in and, you know, disconnect all the battery leads and shut everything up and all that jazz because, uh, the next guy will thank you. And that next guy may just be you. All right. I think we're going to call part one here. And, uh, unless I can find some more info about these things, uh, I think this is just going to be a part one, just a one and done. Um, I can find fuck all about the UH-123. I can find fuck all about Hitachi excavators from the 80s. Um, the best lead I can find is, I think there are some like service manuals on eBay for like 
80 bucks and I think there's a guy on a random website where you can like send him a money order and for like 50 bucks he'll send you a, like a physical copy of a uh, service manual and what will probably actually happen is he'll just pocket the $50 and then give your address to a bunch of uh, spam websites along with your email so uh, I don't think I'm willing to spend $80 on a fucking service manual for a piece of shit excavator that's clearly um, never going to move under its own power again and if it does it's probably going to crumble into a pile within you know 20 feet um, she, ain't, she ain't worth saving the motor may be worth saving um, if uh, somebody out there has a UH-123 and needs a, uh, uh, a Hino um, whatever the hell the engine was I'll put it up here uh, EH-10 I think um, yeah hit me up uh, I'm Unless I can find more information, and if anybody knows um, anything about these units, or any other similar ones, anything about the engine, anything about the UH-123, drop it down there in the comments. I would absolutely love to read. Um, and if anyone has, like, a copy of the service manual, or even the owner's manual, or, or literally anything, even if it's in, like, Japanese, um, if you can get me a PDF copy of it, that would be awesome. And uh, I would come back out here and uh, give this another whirl, but at the moment, um... I don't, I just don't, I don't know whether this is 24 volt or it's 12 volt. I don't know what size battery it uses. I don't know what the starting procedure is. There may be a switch or a lever or a sensor or something that's, you know, preventing it from turning over. But, you know, it sounds like it's trying to because I can hear the starter solenoid clicking. Or it could be the starter's uh, totally fucked. Um, I don't know. I know nothing about this, this unit. Um, and I don't really know, I don't really care enough to ask the guy who technically owns it. Um you know, anything about it, uh, or nor am I willing to really spend any money on it. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to leave it here. Um, but, uh, if you, uh, liked me giving it, uh, a, you know, half-assed attempt, go down there and like the video. And again, please, if you know anything about these, please go down there and comment. Um, you know, even if you, you're just spitballing ideas, let me know. And uh, if you potentially want to see the continuation of this series, which I don't think will ever be continued, but I don't think it's going anywhere, and I'm certainly not going to move. So uh, there's always that distinct possibility I may come back out here for some reason or another. Uh, how about consider smashing that subscribe button? And uh, even if you don't want to see the rest of this uh, excavator, or you're at least under you know, the real realistic impression that I'm <laughs> never going to touch this thing again, uh, I do fuck with other old rusty garbage that I find lying around. So... Uh, Go down there, smash the subscribe button, and until next time, I'm out. <laughs>